Good morning, Latin. This episode is for February 9th and 10th. My name is Gio Soriano. And I'm Matthew McBride. This week we have some exciting field reports about student involvement in the Super Bowl and Valentine's Day. Your Eagle Update starts now. This new track season, they are starting off with a change in coaches. Coach Henning for distance and Coach Cartwright for sprints. The good thing is that Coach Henning isn't completely new to track because he has a background with coaching cross country. We talked to Coach Cartwright and some of the students to see how they feel about the new change in coaches. I'm actually going back to where I started. Uh, my background is a sprint coach, jumps coach. So I'm back to where I started. Uh, that's what I did with the girls and I did with the boys before going to distance and now I'm back, so I'm excited. I know that the boys are excited. Uh, the new coaches are, I would say, pretty good. Uh, it's more work ethic with them. Uh, they require, well, not require, but we do more work with them, and I feel like they're pretty good coaches right now. My feelings towards my co uh, new coaches are um, good vibes, usually, because uh, he's, this is actually my cross-country coach, so I got to know him during the cross-country season, which is which I've gotten to know him for three years. So it's nothing really new to me, but for some of the other guys, it's new. So yeah, it's good to have a new coach for track. While switching up your coaches can take some getting used to, having different coaches can bring a positive impact on the way that the students perform. We heard from some of the students that they are excited about this change, and we got to hear what the team is looking forward to this season. I'm looking forward for the, the experience that the guys that have already been on the team, that they can help the younger guys understand what track and field is all about, um, how to work hard, understand why you're working hard, but be smart about it. Um, and also have the experienced guys or the veteran guys get the younger guys to understand how fun track and field can be. Probably going into uh, sectionals and making it far. At least we have a pretty good team right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, keep building our relationship, especially you know, knowing him for a couple of years now. Um, I hope that he pushes the other athletes and making them better and everything, and hopefully he continues to be a tra track coach and um, hopefully continues to share his thoughts and um, his theories on how to become a better runner. We are excited to see what the season has in store for the boys' track team. Make sure that you keep up and seeing when their upcoming games are so that you can show your support. For the Eagle Update, this is Ida Lisa Chinike. Listening to music is a regular thing for people all around the world. Making it, on the other hand, is a challenge that requires a variety of skills. These students have been making it on their own and have been able to earn over 100,000 streams. It was mostly my friends, they dragged me into it. At first, I kind of like, I'm not gonna, I kind of clowned on them for making music at first because I thought it was a trend, but um, once I got me into it, I found out it was actually like really fun. It's been a huge part of my life and my family's life too. My dad is in a band and he, my dad plays guitar. He, like, he likes playing the guitar. He tried to teach me, I didn't like it, but music's always been around the family. While it is a serious business, they've been able to find fun in the process. The fun part is experimenting with a lot of things. Um, you can go into a project like expecting one thing, wanting a certain sound out of it, but then finding an instrument you never knew you had before, and then messing with that, and then it can turn into something else that was even better than what you thought of. Making it darker, making it creepy, it's just, that was just hard. You had to change up the settings or use instruments that you never used before. Their passion for music hasn't just given them streams, but it's also helped them in times of need. My sophomore year, because it was a difficult time for me and because I was inside the house the entire time, it was during COVID. And I just, all I did was listen to music and music helped me not get sad, make me really happy hearing music and then makes me want to go outside and do other things. I've always found it hard to express myself with words just because I've never gotten used to it that way. So making beats, um, there's really no words in it. You can use vocals and stuff, but making beats is a way for me to express myself without having to use my mouth, you know? It's me using 
it's really just me using my brain and my heart in unison. And that's what I like about it. I can portray how I'm thinking and how I'm feeling at the same time. As far as emotions go with music, there's definitely lots of, it's definitely like a roller coaster when it comes to it, but um, it's fun to do in the end. So it's really easy to keep your head in the game because the moments of like triumph are a lot better than your lows. So it's gonna feel a lot better. Music is a very powerful tool. It can help you grow as a person. It can give you lessons you can use for the rest of your life. It takes a lot of patience to make music. Because you can, you can start a project, like you think you're really hyped about this project, like, oh, it's going to sound super good. You have everything in mind for it. it you want it to sound like it's going to sound really good. And then you can start making it, and you're going to find out this is a lot harder than I expected. Like, sometimes you have to just stop, come back, and then keep on doing your thing. It's really just trial and error. Be consistent, just be consistent. People will keep on messing with you if you keep on being consistent. If you're just making one song, and another song, then deleting it because you didn't like it for a few days and then post another song, no. People are gonna get upset. No matter how many people don't like it or do like it, just keep on going. For the Eagle Update, this is Gio Soriano. Leiden students have been struggling to build a stronger community with club and sports involvement down. Our team decided to talk to students and Dr. Manola on the issue. Kids went to everything, we went to a basketball game, this Crowds were packed with students, all dressing up the theme. Hockey games were filled. Football games were forward to look to. Everybody did spirit weeks. Everybody tried having fun and getting it as a, together as a group. I mean, my first homecoming and having turnabout too. I mean, I know we don't have that anymore, but especially back then, to go to one of those dances with all the people that I just met was amazing. Like one of the best experiences from that time. Leiden seniors are the most able to see and feel how the past few years have changed schools, especially in regards to student involvement. They had one good year of the true high school experience, and then it was cut short due to the pandemic. East Leiden principal Dr. Manola and the seniors understand that this is a lasting problem. I think school is, and I'll speak for Leiden in particular, it's, it's your community, it's your connection. And that's what makes us so special here, and COVID sort of just ripped that away from everyone. I feel like after COVID, seeing the new freshmen and sophomores, um, they don't quite get that high school experience. I feel the hallways are a lot different from what I saw freshman year. Um, I see people walking with less smiles, I feel. It's not that same energy of people being happy. To from being a freshman until now, you could really see a change in the way people kind of are. And since people make up the Latin community, it's changed kind of the whole thing. And I feel like it's just that much more difficult in general for some people to communicate. The biggest challenge I think during COVID was so many of the things that draw kids into connecting, uh, the being together, the clubs, the activities, the sports, we couldn't do those things. So then because that lasted for almost two years, coming out of that, sort of all those traditions and those, those expectations that we had for a long time just weren't quite what people were doing because we hadn't been doing it. Not to mention a lot of the students who sort of lead that, our juniors and seniors graduated. And so then our, our freshmen and sophomores, which is you all now who are juniors and seniors, um, you know, had to kind of step up and, and rebuild whatever that connection to involvement is. Dr. Manola states that this problem is not strictly related to Leiden. It is happening in schools all over. However, this year has been much better than previous years. A lot of schools are experiencing this, experiencing this, and what's really cool is we've had New Eagle experience. We had our Rising Eagle Nights, which we actually went to our feeder schools. We've most recently had our Taste of East. That's our incoming eighth grade night. Biggest one we've had in years. And it really makes us optimistic about people's interest and like we need to reconnect and be part of who we are. Um, but we had over 700 people attend our Taste of East, which normally we have three to 400. So I point to homecoming, for example, we had over 2000 students attend homecoming. And again, that's the biggest one we've ever had. Um, and, and anytime we have an event, anytime we have, the, we're seeing numbers in clubs and, and sports bigger than we've seen in a long time. We're seeing community events bigger than we've seen in a long time. I, I think people really want that and really feel the importance of that. So it's kind of exciting that that's a great building point. Our seniors right now, our class 23 is doing an amazing job. And I think that'll keep building and our incoming class seems to be super engaged. So that's all good signs, I think, moving forward. In the past years, Leiden thrived because of the involvement of students and school spirit. Leiden needs this kind of involvement from students and inspiration from teachers and administrators. I feel like we need to do a better job at announcing our sporting events and marketing them to get kids to go to them. I just hope that, you know, we can maintain like a strong togetherness and work on whatever needs to be changed, you know, and address problems that students have and problems that the community has and just 
continue pushing forward. It takes some time for students to just like interact and get out there to meet new people and do other things. I'd like uh see more students go to sports events, join new clubs, and try new sports. Doesn't really matter how good you are, just go out there to have some fun. I understand there's a lot of things going on. People are watching their siblings, people have to work for their families, for themselves, and I get all those pieces. What, what I would always say to that is obviously we have to do what we have to do to take care of ourselves, but most importantly, if you have a chance to get involved, do it. Um, there are 45 clubs, there are 27 different sports, there are so many different things beyond just what we do in our classes, and, and more times than not, students who get involved outside of the classroom tend to do better in the classroom as well. And so my, my advice always to, to our younger students is give it a shot, try it. Um, you might come out and not love a club, and that's okay. Then try a different club. And if you don't see one that you like, propose a new club. We are always looking for new ideas. Um, for As far as sports go, come out. Give it a shot. You're going to love it. We have great coaches. We have great teammates. Um, so really, it's give it a chance. See what you might like and, and keep figuring out where that fit is. For the Eagle Update, this is Jimmy Dundovich. With Valentine's Day next Tuesday, our team decided to go around the school and ask students what they think contributes to a healthy relationship. Biden students, Valentine's Day is approaching. With the interest of butterflies floating around people's stomachs, couples prepare for dates and romantic gestures and more. Andrew Jackson and I took the halls to see what Latin students thought on what makes a good couple. And then, uh, what do you think the most important thing in a healthy relationship is? Uh, definitely communication, because uh, like out of experience and out of a lot of people who told me, uh, they usually don't have enough communication in the relationship. So I believe communication is like key to like relationships. A solid friendship that blossoms into a relationship, um, taking your time and. Uh, respecting your partner's boundaries and needs. Yeah, communication, trust, friendship too. You guys gotta have a good friendship bond with each other. Yeah. Honesty and open communication. And I think we have to be careful about being possessive. I feel like when you're young, especially, you get bored easily, and then you don't want to commit anymore. So if you're if you connect with someone when you're already completely authentic then it's less likely for you guys to like get bored and separate. Mm -hmm. I think communication is key. A lot of people don't know how to communicate anymore. Perfect, thank you. Um, how would you explain relationships from 2023 to your grandparents? I would say now it's like more like for the media, I guess. Like I feel like a lot of people our age post stuff for the social media. And I think back then, I think they are like, I don't know, it was like actually romantic. Yeah. I feel like now the dating scene, if I were to explain it to them, it would just be like a bunch of free trials on Netflix, Hulu, whatever. You're like, we'll see, see if you like something for two weeks, and then if you don't, you stop paying for it and forget about it and try something else. Um, a lot of times when people go out on dates, they're focused on their cell phones, they're focused on taking pictures of their events and not communicating with the person that's sitting directly in front of them. Our grandparents were not lugging their Polaroid cameras out to dinner to take pictures of their steaks. That's all the news we have for this week. Make sure to keep tuning in weekly for news that involves students and make sure to check your email for anything else. I'm Gio Soriano. And I'm Matthew McBride. Signing off. off.